We had to take a pause on football because there was just too much tea for ACC men's basketball last night. Jason Capel, Jeff Capel, Pitt, UNC. What is all the malarkey about? We'll talk about it on today's show as well as Louisville finally joining the ACC party. You are Locked On ACC, your daily podcast on the Atlantic Coast Conference. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. It was a battle of the free throws, a little instance that happened all night for the Tar Heels. And, of course, getting that lick back, beating a 3-0 and in Chapel Hill for Coach Capel and the Pittsburgh Panthers. I'm Candace Cooper. This is Kenton Gibbs. And welcome to Locked on ACC, a show that covers all of our teams across the conference each and every day. We're excited to have you always. Thank you for listening wherever you listen to podcasts as well as subscribing to our YouTube channel. We are so close to 900, only seven, and that road to 1,000 will be so much easier as long as you click that subscribe button. Kenton, how are we feeling? Are we ready to jump into it? Feeling good, feeling great. Feeling great, feeling good. How are you? <laughs> Excellent. It would be better if I could figure out what in the world was going on with Jason Capel, former UNC stand. I would call him standout. That would, that's that's probably a interesting adjective. You know what I'm saying? Please don't have former him UNC. show is disrespecting him too. Please, please. I'm just you got all jokes. You got to excuse Sister Cooper, brother Capel. I ain't got nothing to do with it. I ain't got nothing to do with it. All jokes. We had Jason Capel, former UNC star, played, then coached, did all the things, recruited, blah, 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 blah. The story is very muddy, but you read it on your own time. Say all that to say, he is the brother of Jeff Capel. He is on Jeff Capel's Pittsburgh staff. Last night, North Carolina took on Pitt at Chapel Hill. You know, Jason was expecting a little more warmer of a welcome, didn't receive that felt a way about it. The boys ended up coming through for him and getting the W. There was a little bit of back a house uh, kerfuffle, we should say. And Jason wasn't feeling the non-welcome, didn't feel like he was a part of the Carolina family and felt very slighted. And he talked about it with social media and allegedly he had, he felt, well, I'm not going to speak for him. Allegedly, there was a tweet from the quote unquote social media team that went out earlier in the day trying to give a rundown of the game. They used uh, Jeff Lebo, who is the same number as Jason Capel wore while he was at UNC, and he had his tongue sticking out. So we, no one knows if that was the reason why he felt away because Lebo is a walk on and he has tongue out and maybe dissing Pitt, but the picture was used, blah, 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 blah. Then you have a post game from Jeff Capel basically trying to explain that Jason hasn't felt like part of the Carolina family way back to 2009. Well, there was an alleged booing of Jason as well. That was that's that's part of it that that is emphasized. But here, but here's the thing. If you worked at Duke, I would boo you. If you worked at NC State, I would boo you. If you worked at Syracuse, I would boo you if you were on the opposite team. If I, people feel the way. I hear you. I'm just I'm just giving a little further detail to not make the capel seem like whiners so that, you know, again. But I don't even think it's about the booing. I really do think it's about not feeling like the Carolina family since 2009, which is what, 10, 11 years now. How many years? 14 years now. Can't even do my math. I think it's the fact that he doesn't feel embraced every time he comes back. But he, you know, said out of his mouth. You know, I'm the one that brought this program back for the Matt Doherty years and helped turn this program around and Matt Doherty ran it to the ground. All these alleged things. Now, if we don't, we all know, well, some of you don't, Matt Doherty is the coach that led to like eight and 20, one of the worst records of UNC, former player, but coaching was not his forte. I will say that. Um, and, you know, leave it there. All that to say, I think Jason was weighing his feelings. I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna read this excerpt to you from Please. directly from, from ESPN's website. In a Please. video review by ESPN, an animated Jason Capel standing in the hallway of the Dean E. Smith Center following the matchup can be heard com proclaiming, "Check the record book. My boys did my work. I ain't got nothing to say. All I did for this program, and y'all disrespect me. You got a broom. That's a sweep." 
So, I mean, the, and again, this was after the alleged booing had occurred. Um, so, again, I, I mean, I'm not going to lie to you. Well, let's I, say, but, here, but here's the thing. Let's all give more context, right? Caleb allegedly got fouled, did not get fouled because the buzzer went off. But a lot of people were booing the fact that it came down to the final play. It was 65-64 ultimate win for Pitt. North Carolina did not make their free throws 13 of 22 all night. That's all they have to look for or why this game is bad. Beyond that, they said the last final shot, Caleb took it. He smacked his hand. He did give him a high five, but it wouldn't have mattered. It's a moot point because the clock was already out. So, of course, the ref's not going to call that foul. Of course, fans are going to boo because they want the foul. Now, if you took that to be I'm booing you as you're celebrating a win, that's on you, big dog. That's that's a personal whatever. Like you said, the social media post played into it as well, which was talked about from Jeff Capel. But even I that, just, what is your – come on, dog. That's You're you're looking for a reason. That's like me saying, okay, they put up – the UNC swim team puts up a tweet with a black girl swimming and saying, we're making history, and, like, didn't use me. I would be like, yeah, I would feel – but I'd be making it about myself. You know what I'm saying? Celebrate Black History Month by not acknowledging your black swimmers. I mean, listen, I'm just, I'm telling you what, what I'm hearing is coming out of this story. So you're looking that, for a reason. No, 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 no. There's nothing coming out of the story. You're looking, you looked for a reason, my guy. Okay, this it's is, okay. This is one of those, and, and we'll, we'll bring in another former uh, UNC player who may actually be a UNC great here and Michael Jordan and saying that uh, this was a, I took that personally moment. This was Absolutely. a, you know, I mean, hey, Pitt got the sweep. He, uh, Jason and Jeff took it personal. They saw that post and they said, word, okay, okay, this is the edge we need. This is, you know, like like how Michael Jordan imagined that guy walking by him and said, hey, good game, Mike, even though he didn't say anything to him. This is one of those moments. They found, yeah. their, they found their edge. They found what they needed to go get themselves a win, and Pitt got it done. Yeah, very true. And I think that it's ultimately very interesting how, you know, uh, whatever your reason to be, however you want to spark the team, however you want to get the guys going. I think that JB, Mr. Burton, had a great game. I think the guys played really well. I think that was taken away from, you know, personal feelings of a moment. But I go back to always saying, don't let it be about you. Let it be about your players and how they performed. Like, don't make uh, don't make the moment about you. I say that about Coach K. I would say that about anybody. I will say this, though. This does feel like, this wasn't just that I took that personally. The team needs an edge moment. This feels like Jason oh, yeah. really does feel slighted. Like he really does. Like there's something in his spirit that's like, oh, they really don't rock with me. This and I get it. But 2009, the Oklahoma played North Carolina. And this Jeff, Jeff Capel in his post game. Coach Capel was coaching for Oklahoma. They met in the NCAA tournament. Jason wore an Oklahoma shirt. People felt away about it. Carolina fans let him know about himself. I don't think it's leave the people alone and his family. He's supporting his brother. We see it all the time. You think Travis Kelsey's mama going to wear whatever shirt? You know, it's just, that's just what it is. You support who you want to support. He felt a way about that. And I think just even in years since, maybe has felt a way. I get having a tough relationship with Carolina. Please understand. I can go to a whole podcast episode on the things that I've experienced and whatever. It's very complicated. However, I say that in that moment, in a big win, you made that about you and not your players. I mean, for sure. For sure. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. That's like dog. Relax. It's, it's definitely, it's definitely about them. But I mean, in his defense, coaches are people too. You know what I mean? Like as, as mature as they should be. As, okay. As, as we see, or at least we interpret these men as being bastions of like level headedness and like uh, selflessness and, and care for their players and all that. And, I mean, they can display those things while also being the human of like, you know what? This moment is about me a little bit. This yeah. is about me. And I also would say that at the end of the day, the way our society works, someone's always going to catch. It's always a hot mic. Like there's always a hot mic. There's always someone around who's going to video oh. you. There's always somebody around who's going to catch whatever you do, all the rants, whatever. Take it in the locker room. Yell it well, out. They, the didn't, room. they didn't. I mean, I believe Capel was talking about this in this post game uh, interview. So it wasn't a hot mic that got him. No, Capel. No, Capel didn't do an interview. Jason Capel did not do an interview. No, I'm saying Jeff. I believe. Yeah, him. but the yelling was Jason on yes. camera. Yes, yes. The the yelling was Jason yes. on camera. But I'm saying that 
the the problems that we're talking about between oh, Jason yeah. and the program, this yeah. was not something that was like a, oh man, they caught me on the hot mic with a one off. No, no, no. Jeff came yeah. in off the top rope too, said, My brother don't feel love from y'all. I don't know but what y'all got. That's on. different than screaming what Jason screamed, in my opinion. In my well, opinion. I, I don't know. I, I think it's just about, I think they about neck and neck. I think they're about neck and neck there. Very interesting thoughts there. We're really excited about our new sports betting partner for Locked On because they're number one sports book in America, FanDuel. And if you're new to FanDuel, that's even better. They have so many great features that make betting on sports fun and easy. Download FanDuel now so you can bet Super Bowl 57 with a no sweat first bet. You'll get up to $3,000 back in bonus bets if it's your first If your first bet doesn't win. FanDuel lets you bet on everything from the money line to point spreads to who will score a touchdown best of all you get paid your winnings instantly so join FanDuel today FanDuel today at FanDuel.com slash locked on to claim your no sweat first bet on Super Bowl 57 that's FanDuel.com slash locked on make every moment more with FanDuel official sportsbook partner of the NFL Locked On is heading to the Super Bowl. Get inside analysis from the hosts that covered the NFL's next generation in college and find out on, out which NFL draft board these players will be climbing all in one location. Subscribe to Locked On NFL Draft for nightly live shows from the Senior Bowl on Tuesday and Wednesday and Thursday at 9 p.m. So make sure you support our friends at Locked On Podcast Network who are covering all the things and looking for your next great potential. NFL star rocking and rolling with Kenton Gibbs. We're talking through the ACC Wednesday night games were a hoot. And if damn it, if Louisville didn't figure it out, 68 58 victory for the Cardinals. Sometimes you just need one to get you going. Georgia. One to get you going. Georgia Tech. I don't know. We've been talking about Coach Payne. Should we be talking about Coach Pastner? Pastner is, I believe, I believe he's good only because they very recently won an ACC tournament. That's mm, Johnny come lately. That's what? the only reason. That's the only reason. But as Andre 3000 said, you only funky as your last cut. And this last cut stinks. It's all awesome. Janet Jackson say, what have you done for me lately? What have you done for me lately? And again, um, Mr. Pastner, you're doing I bad. Mean, we don't even have like stars. We don't even have anybody to really get excited about in terms of your roster recruiting wise. I'll be very interested to see who's trying to make that trip to Atlanta. I just think it's, it's looking, it's looking a little spicy. It look a little warm. For it's, it's, it's looking grim. It's <laughs> looking grim. And I'm going to give him some advice that Andy Reed gave Patrick Mahomes. When it's looking grim, you got to be the grim reaper. And by that, I don't mean, uh, be the Grim Reaper in your own career by losing to one of the worst Power Six teams in the history of Ken Palm rankings. Yeah. That is not what you're supposed to do. Uh, with that being said, congratulations to Louisville. They've Hell been so yeah. close so many times. L. Ellis and company have been right there so many times. And I'm going to tell you, free L. Ellis. Free him. <laughs> because every time that he they get a lead, I was trying to figure out, why does this team keep like – either getting really close or even getting a lead. And then all of a sudden it goes poof bye. Lola's gone. It's, it's a reality that every time L Ellis goes to the bench, that team turns into a different team. They don't know how to do the basic things without L on the court. And this like, y'all have L scholarships deserves better. Too. Yeah. L deserves y'all have scholarships better. too. Y'all are not, Y'all are not a, a, a bunch of walk-ons with him. Y'all didn't. Y'all aren't limited to, to three scholarships. I believe y'all got what? What is it? Ten? Eleven? Like I don't know if they got a lot going on with their whole. We got to do further investigation in terms of. You remember when they had all those scandals and stuff? I mean, even if they are on restrictions, they're not restricted enough to where y'all starting five got walk-ons in it. Come on now, come on, y'all. Listen, like I said, free L. He, he deserves better, but they finally got their first ACC win. It's good to see because seeing the team go winless in conference is just nasty work. It's disgusting work. Well, everyone deserves one, and that's certainly what we all have. So everyone has won an ACC game. Like we can walk away with this season saying at least somebody wants something, and maybe that you know elevates our case a little bit. Maybe probably find it, find it. You know, at the end of the day, it doesn't. It was a win. It doesn't. Okay, okay. It, I, was, yeah, I was, I was, I was trying. I was trying. Okay. But. A, a team that has been doing really well, who's continuing streaks and winning games that they're supposed to win, which is something that hasn't been always the case in recent seasons, but certainly has been so far for the pack. 
94 to 68 victory. Six, yep, 66, excuse me, 66 victory for the Wolfpack. Great win. Firing from all cylinders. Quavion Smith, whew, Jesus, 30 plus points on the night. You got just energy from the pack. And I think even though it was a 9 p.m. game, crowd wasn't crazy. I think those boys know how to play for themselves at this point. DJ Burns posting up at the three-point line is pure insanity. <laughs> it is insanity. And yet somehow it works. It, it works and it's it's craziness that yields points. So I guess NC State would not want to go away from that. Also, um, this is this is a game that many people had pegged as a trap game because Florida State had been playing above their heads. You as well. You, you, State, you had it as a trap game. Yeah, I'm it's many people. I'm me. I mean, I'm it's I'm people. I'm I'm people. Um, but this was a game in which, you know, their NC State is new to the party of having expectations in terms of men's basketball and having games where people look at them and say, you should win this. You uh, should. I feel like they've already always had expectations. They just weren't meeting them. Knock it off. Okay. Knock right. it off. And, okay. Okay. At this I'm, point, we thought Kevin, Coach Keese was going to be out of here if they had had a very similar season. He also hasn't been set up for success with the whole NCAA issues and what was going to come down. Right. That was tough. And then you got guys leaving left and right, or not even not even getting to you know put on a jersey for NC State. But that's that's the new world. That's yeah. the new world that you got to live with and deal with, and you got to go after players that you can get the best yeah. ability is availability. It don't matter if you sign every five star in the world if they go to play in the overtime league. It don't matter. So. Um, this is a, an NC State team that's new to having these expectations that people are saying are realistic, shall I say. That yes. having expectations okay. where people are like, no, 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 this isn't a joke, guys. This isn't just NC State fans. Nationally, you should win this game. Like, this is their first time having that. And so seeing that they came out and dominated right away, they went on a 40-8 to eight run after Florida State scored the first two points of the game. Yeah. That right there is a team that is nasty, hungry, downright determined because this wasn't a situation where Florida State was missing shots. They were all up in ball handlers grills. They were all over the place. They were active, full court, just everywhere that Florida State went. There was an NC State defender there. Hey, pal, how are you? Oh, you want interest to the basket? You got to go through me. So, you know, it was a uh, it was a very, very great night to be a Wolfpack. A hundred percent. And if we look and turn our heads to Tuesday night, our weekly games for the men, we had a couple uh, feathers ruffled, I should say. Boston College upset Clemson 62 to 54. It was a terrible offensive night for the Tigers. And honestly, it was just about time. You kept playing with your food and were able to squeak things by, but it finally caught up to you and losing to a Boston College team. That's tough. I might knock you out of top 25 in my opinion. Not just losing to Boston College, shrinking your lead in the ACC. I'm going to give you a group of teams that are all within three games of the um, lead for the ACC in order. North Carolina at two and a half games back. Duke at two and a half games back. Miami at two games back. NC State at two games back. Pitt at one game back. Virginia at half a game back. That is the importance of winning the games you're supposed to win because now the chasm, the gap that was there is shrinking because all those other teams, they are taking care of business. All those other teams that we're talking about, one of the hottest teams in the country is on your heels in Virginia. I don't know what has happened, but Kihei Clark has figured out he needs to be aggressive. And all of a sudden, he is diming up everybody because he simply has – made a, a very conscious effort to go to the lane. And so, and so with him getting hot, therefore meaning the Virginia offense gets hot. Y'all decide to lose to Boston College? Clemson, you were playing the Rodney Dangerfield. We get no respect at all. And then you go out there and show why people have had the fraud alert up for you this entire time. That's very, very true. Talking about Miami and Virginia Tech, 92-83 victory for the Hurricanes, Virginia Tech team that I want to take serious, but I can't because I don't know which team I'm going to get night in and night out. You know, credit to Miami for having a great day and doing what they are supposed to do, bouncing back off of a tough loss. And I just feel like, again, Virginia Tech, 
they might still be that one that sneakily has a really strong ACC tournament run. Why, why should you take Virginia Tech seriously? I'm confused. Like, I, I've seen no evidence to believe that this is a serious operation at this point. <laughs> um, and and I know that we're look, talking about last year's ACC tournament champs. I know that. I'm aware yeah. of that. Yeah. But we've already talked about it on this show. The last two teams to win it. That Georgia Tech is now dead last in the conference. And Virginia Tech is bottom four in the conference. <laughs> but, uh, so, yeah, y'all did good things in the past. But we can't just – Jose Alvarado ain't walking through that door. These the, – the Virginia Tech players that won that ACC tournament aren't walking through that door. Justin Mutz was on that team. Okay, Justin Mutz is walking through the door, sure. But the rest of those players – And that walking. and that one guy who's melanin deficient, what's, that, what's his name? The one who can shoot threes. They're, listen, they got a big – they had a big as well. Uh, the, you you know the one I'm talking about, the light-skinned big. It's like Acuna big. or something like that? Yeah, yeah, yes, yeah. he was very good. He's not walking through that door. He's, I believe he's walking through the door somewhere in the G League or somewhere Puerto else. Puerto Rico. <laughs> either, way, either way, he's not walking through that door. Sure. So, I mean, why should you take this team seriously? Why? What, what evidence do you have? Because they show flashes, they have moments, they beat you know decent teams. I just you know at okay, you're right. My, Let me table table t- t- temper my expectations. I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you something that this uh, that my mother told me a long time ago to save me a lot of heartache and a lot of trouble. Okay, mm-hmm. she said when it comes, son, when it comes to to finding the woman that, of your dreams and all that, it's not about getting the woman who does the spectacular things every now and then. And that makes you feel good and feel great. But every day, the day to day, the regular stuff they they struggle with. It's about finding a woman who day in, day out is there on the job, being consistent, doing the things. They do the little things that makes the big thing of your life much better. Virginia Tech is not there day to day winning the games that they should or that we believed that they should win coming in. They're not there consistently doing the things that had them winning the ACC tournament championship last year. So why should we look at them and because of their flashes, believe that they're something they're not? Stay safe, King. Stay woke. We're going to talk about Duke and Wake Forest here to round out our men's conversation. The Blue Devils squeaked by the Demon Deacon 75 to 73. Winning at home is what Duke likes to do. God, I wanted that one for Wake Forest. Came down to the final couple of plays. It's a very back and forth game, but I get it. You know, defend home, do it well, do what you have to do. Still learning though, very much for those Blue Devils, and even with Wake Forest, it's tough. You're making. We want to make cases for you, but you got these are the games that you got to win. You know, Duke. It felt like they were looking forward a little bit to the Battle of the Blues coming up here Saturday. Mm-hmm. It kind of felt like they were like, eh, we'll. We'll figure this thing out and we'll we'll work it out some way, somehow. But they start to pull away a little bit toward the end of that uh, toward the end of that first half. And I'm gonna tell you this, they never really looked back at that point. And you could tell that at cer- certain points, Wake was a little rattled by the environment of Cameron. You could tell that, but again, down the stretch late, they made it a game, they kept it close, and they battled. They battled, they made it a game late. But it just wasn't enough. You know what I mean? It, it, this this Wake team, when you shoot 29% from three, you're always going to have a problem uh, winning against a team like Duke. It just wasn't their night. Yeah. You know, you bring up a good point about looking ahead. And to me, in ACC, I don't know why you look ahead. You got to look at the right what's in front of you because every single team wants whatever you got. But in terms of Duke and North Carolina, is was North Carolina looking in front of Pitt? They, they shouldn't have been. They, Pitt's one of the best teams in the ACC right now. I hope you wouldn't. But that makes me say, what is going to even come of this Blue Blood matchup here? And, you know, that's the sad part about the whole Capel situation because we yeah. didn't even get into talking about the game. We didn't even talk say. about the actual game that, you know, Pitt, they found a way late, leading score gets taken out the game, fouls out and all that good stuff, and – and uh, they they still found a way to win it despite that their guard play was phenomenal, and you they got they got, Carolina got out coached, and you just and you just don't have anything to say about the game other than 
Oh, look at the cables. Oh. No, I also would say that North Carolina, as much as y'all cry about getting, people are upset about getting all the free throws. If you're going to get them, you got to make them. If you're yeah. going to get them, you got to make them. If you Absolutely. want to get all the fouls, that's cool. Can't get th- go 13 to 22. Armando Baycott only had three field goals of the night. Like, what? That's your star play. That's that AC, quote unquote, AC player of the year. Absolutely. This was, again, this was a game where Pitt came in and it just felt like, it felt like, they wanted it more. It they felt walked like, into their trap and took over their trap. It, it felt like from the start of this game, the coaches took it personally. The players took it personally. This was like, we really don't like y'all. Like, we really. Capel said, I still got that Duke in me. I really want to beat y'all back. Well, someone argued that this is a new Duke-Maryland matchup to where it's not like your definite crosstown rival, but it's just one of those teams that you come in, they hate you, you hate them. That's how it is every single time. I mean, in, until Capel leaves there, I, I believe that's how it will be. I mean, Jeff Capel is a, a Duke guy through and through, and, you know, he he does not like those guys. He does not like them. He does not care for them. His brother doesn't care for them. Now and his brother does care for them. Let's relax. It's like it's like a, a, the old African proverb goes: "A child who does not feel the warmth of the village will burn it down to feel its warmth." He he want to burn that thing down to feel that warmth, baby. But that's what we got going on there. So you know, again, it was a it was a again it was a sad part that that was a distraction that that kept us away from talking about the actual game. But I mean, you know, it, it was a great showing by Nate Cummings and company. Um, and you know, Caleb Love doing Caleb Love things I've always, you know, stay, stay. He class. was the one that even had them in the game. What you mean? Listen, you love Caleb. That's why I said Caleb Love doing Caleb Love things. He shoots you out of games. And what is he also doing the back end of that? Keeps he you shoots in games. You in it. Yeah. He shot him in and you know, Armando Bay cut at the line, could not get it done. Will teams implore the hacker, hacker cut, uh, strategy going forward? Who knows? But uh, as far as this, as far as these two matchups, it did appear that both teams were looking forward a little bit. It did appear that both teams were like, yeah, we got the prime time slot, baby. We're going to be going Saturday in front of everybody. The whole nation's going to have their eyes on us. It's time. But they forgot that you you got something to do before them. But the whole nation, all like to me, at what point do you say this is just comes with comes with the beast, right? Like we know every single year, all the nation's gonna look at me. Let me make sure I take care of everything else first. Like we all know, everyone gets up for the Duke game. Everyone gets up for the North Carolina game. Like that's just why are you even making it a big to do? You know, I mean, you know. To me, to me, if you're either program, you play on national TV enough to where it shouldn't matter. That's what, I'm, that's what I'm saying. That's what I'm and neither of y'all are ranked. So, like, respectfully, this is just like a there's not a big storyline. This is life after Coach K. This is Hubert David. Will he get out coach or out scheme by Coach Shire? Nah, who knows? You know, like I think it's just a matter of while well, Quietus has kept Coach Kai on the bench for Duke. Maybe he has some drawn up some plays or whatever, what have you. But we all know how it's gonna go. Let's see if there's a nice handshake, so everyone gets along. But man, let's talk about real housewives of ACC. That's what it gave. This yeah, was giving. I, I, and you know, I live for some good mess. I live for some good sports mess. You do not. Okay. I'm about to say, you do not like Real Housewives. Please stop lying to the group. No, I'm not a Real Housewives guy. No, 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 no. I'm, I'm a, I'm a sports mess guy because sports mess is like genuine. Like that's not a, somebody had to draw up. I don't like these guys in the script. <laughs> Shout out to Arian Foster. There uh, are scripts. Man. There hey. are scripts. Hey, let me tell you something now. <laughs> <laughs> Let me tell you, when they dropped off the NC State scripts and I saw I was supposed to get injured that much, I cried a little bit in my locker. I said, my okay. career going in here? Right. What? Right. But I digress. Yeah. Um, yeah, but but there's these these it, sports mess is always so genuine. Like I said, you can genuinely tell Jason Capels is hurt. Like we need we <laughs> But that's need, what I'm saying. If your brother is hurt, and again, you have it doesn't come within the bubble. Those UNC players aren't rude to him. The UNC family that really knows the day to day are not rude to him. I think it's just whatever on the outside is making him feel unloved. He needs to address that. That so, might be with his therapist. That might be with his well, whoever. Here's here's what I propose North Carolina do if y'all want to beat Pitt because I believe this is final what, thought. Three, yes, I, I believe this is three straight losses to Pitt. Yeah. Here's what y'all need to do, UNC. Three losses at home. I got something for you, UNC. Here's what you do. Mm-hmm. Call up Ayala Vazette, okay, and have her with y'all. Uh, you you get B dot, 
get uh, uh, a few of whoever y'all most famous fans are. Maybe get Roy Williams in there. Maybe get Hubie in there. I don't know. I don't know. It's up to y'all. It's you, you can get whoever you want. Have her come in and mediate a conversation because Jeff ain't going to be there. He's a Duke guy. He's going to hate you regardless. He's going to hate you regardless. But you can take a little sting off that hate. You can take a little something, take a little animus off that hate. You know what I mean? You take a little up. bit of that Wrap it up. Deep, Come on. deep rooted hate. Get if you have it. her mediate that conversation between y'all and Jason. You see what I'm saying? Just, just, a, just a suggestion. Just a suggestion. I, I heard y'all boosters got deep pockets. Y'all can make it happen. She, I, I heard she ain't cheap, but y'all can make it happen. Women's games go down tonight. Make sure you check all of them out. Literally every other game is with a ranked opponent. It's going to be a great time. We'll talk about those tomorrow, but make sure you come back each and every day. Still football, but, you know, we had to give a real house of the ACC episode today because it was just too spicy from the basketball side of things. For Candace Cooper and Kitten Giz, we hope you have a great rest of your Thursday. Until next time.